Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Barron, Congress passed the uh, uh, NEMA, Nuclear Energy Innovation and Modernization Act, to help facilitate deployment of advanced nuclear. The bill directed the Commission to develop a risk-informed regulatory framework for advanced nuclear, new nuclear technologies. It's a very simple con concept. The level of NRC's nuclear safety requirements should correspond to the associated risk of the facility. You know, you already mentioned safety and security is, is top of the list. This concept is not just applicable to advanced reactors, but is also incorporated through NRC's existing requirements. In 2021, the Commission approved the staff's proposal to establish requirements for nuclear power plants that are going through the decommissioning process. In that time, you were the sole vote in opposition to the staff proposal. One element the staff proposed and the rest of the commissioners supported is limiting a shutdown reactor's emergency planning requirements after enough time has elapsed for the spent nuclear fuel to sufficiently cool down. This very straightforward application of the NRC's risk-informed regulatory process and the commission repeatedly voted on a case-by-case -case basis to do so, the staff proposal formalized that established commission precedent. In your opposition, you stated you supported uh, in, in, the, in your opposition, you supported the theory that a spent fuel pool could immediately empty as a result of a severe accident with no subsequent mitigation actions and that the remaining spent fuel would catch fire and result in the release that impacts public health. In 2014, the NRC spent 11,530 hours and $3 million evaluating the likelihood of this scenario and concluded that it did not warrant additional regulatory requirements. That analysis was included in the staff's regulatory justification to the rule that you opposed. So, Commissioner Barron, do you know what the staff's extensive technical analysis found to be the odds of such an accident occurring at a shutdown nuclear plant? I don't know offhand. The odds were 1 in 10 million. So, you know, I, I, I could get hit by a meteor. That's probably the same odds. So, in your view, does a risk lower than 1 in 10 million meet NRC's statutory regulatory standard of reasonable assurance of adequate protection? Or what is your standard if 1 in 10 million is too much? Well, I, I think in terms of thinking about the probability there, I, I certainly didn't have the view that uh, a spent fuel pool could empty immediately. Um, all of the analysis would show that it's in those kinds of postulated accidents you're talking about several hours. I think the question was, um, I agreed with a scaled approach. Um, and when, when do you take those steps to scale back um, particular requirements? My view was, um, as long as we, the staff, as part of their analysis, including for the decommissioning rulemaking, talked about that there are risks, there are lower risks, but risks associated um, with spent fuel pools. And my thought was, uh, the time to move to the elimination of uh, emergency planning zones and all emergency planning is really when it's in dry cask storage. And that was a view, uh, I took seriously the concerns of FEMA uh, and state regulators and state emergency responders. We heard a lot of concerns from FEMA and state emergency responders about the, the timing for when you make that move and from communities. Um, so from my point of view, um, my goal is to have a balanced decommissioning rule. We're still in the process on that. Um, uh, the, we had the proposed rule, and the staff's now working on a draft final rule. And I want to see what the comments are on that. But we had a lot of public comments, including a lot of concerns um, from states, localities, and FEMA about the timing there. And the view that uh, we're not regulating to zero risk, obviously. Um, but we want to make sure we have uh, adequate protection until uh, dry cask storage. So. Uh, the point here I'm trying to make is we're moving forward towards this new licensing. Mm -hmm. If the standard of risk that is unacceptable to you has to be less than 1 in 10 million, and you also in your statement, or actually your reaction to your question to the chairman's question, extolling the expertise and technical suggestions that the, the terrific staff does and has made over the years, this was something that they... Uh, felt that they had uh, thoroughly researched. Will you use that same standard as you're starting to look at what we know is going to be a very busy and uh, hopefully very productive five years moving forward? Yeah, when I think about uh, small modular reactors, advanced reactors, I, I don't, 
I don't think anyone's talking about a kind of one in 10 million standard for risk. And maybe I'll just so you'd take use a, a different standard. Well, right, we have a rulemaking right now um, that that is focused on emergency planning for small modular reactors. And um, we're now at a, a draft final rule stage before the commission. Uh, my view is we need a graded approach, right? As you have new technologies that are safer, you're not gonna have a 10 mile EPZ in everything we do now. You're, it's gonna be scalable based on the risk associated with the reactor and the safety features of the reactor. So you may have some with five miles, you may have some with two miles. The, the hardest issue is when you're talking about basically no dedicated um, off-site radiological emergency planning, um, effectively uh, no, no EPZ, site boundary. There may be a number of reactors that are gonna be able to make the safety case for that. Um, I could, and, and I think that's reasonable. When I look at all the comments we got on the draft proposed rule, um, I, I'm comfortable going there, but I think it's important that there be a sign off. If you're going all the way down to um, site boundary to make sure that FEMA's comfortable with it and the local um, emergency planners are, and, and response organizations are comfortable that that is um, gonna work for that particular site. But I agree with you, we need a graded approach and, um, and although the votes aren't out yet on that, that's what my vote on that uh, rulemaking says. Thank you.